Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So first of all, we did miss you all. Or uh, we realized that three weeks is just too long to be away from the ill. We never realized that before. Shadi is the way we can say that when we go back home, we also conduct some of these classes there. But this year, uh, due to the activities in, uh, in the uh, education early to end, we were so busy that we never got a chance to hold any of the classes. And we were just consumed by the meetings and uh, uh, other activities of the, the scholarship that we are running in, in Karachi. A couple of just good news, and inshallah in one of some other session, we will show some of the pictures and things that we did in, uh, in Karachi and Lahore and uh, Islamabad. But a uh, couple of things that are coming up in pipeline for this uh, scholarship program that uh, AKS and uh, our teeny mini charity about this way compared to AKS, we have shaken hand with them and they will be adapting some of our bylaws and they will be working with us uh, for the those students who are not able to get into AKS system. You know what is AKS system, right? There's the Akhan school system. And Akhan school system is considered as an elite system. Uh, and since all the uh, children does not qualify for the uh, AK system, normally they are left out. But Molapa had asked leaders how many Smiley are going to uh, or taking advantage of AK system. And then when the report came after the survey, it was less than 30% are Smileys and 70% and more are non smiley So Molapa had shown concern over there. So we've been negotiating with them for the last about a year. How can we bring and where can we bring those kids, smiley kids, into the AK system? And they have agreed to start a second shift in Ahakhan school. So we have our first shift, which is the way it is, is going to be, that's how it's going to be, 30-70 ratio. But evening shift, hopefully we'll have a 70% smiley and 30% not smiley, or even greater number of smileys. And we will look for all those children within our uh, data. And we have do a large data of children and families which are not going to AK. We will share with them and we have other uh, organizations that we work with. They also have a data of the families which uh, does not get into AK system for whatever reason. And there are two reasons. One, they do not qualify on a merit basis or they cannot afford to go to AK system. And just to give you an idea, uh, in other schools, even if it's the highest level of school, fees may be 2000 compared to Akhan school is 4400 So the fee difference is, is a huge... Uh, for parents to afford. Uh, huh? For parents to be able to afford. Uh, for parents to be able to afford it. Even with our scholarship offer, they cannot afford to go there. So with the evening shift, we have negotiated a rate that our children will be able to go with our scholarship, no cost to the family. And we, inshallah, we will start with a very small number, maybe 100 children. It's a pilot program. A pilot program, first year, 100 children that we will sponsor. They will have six, 700 children. Mm -hmm. But we will sponsor 100 children and we will pay for 100% <coughs> of their scholarship fees, including the admission fees, including the moving costs. Because when they go from one school to the other, there's a uniform, there's uh, shoes and books and you know other computer fees and this fees and that fees. So anyway, th this was the highlight of our, uh, our visit this year. 
Not to mention that we have a second hand with the Punjab region Akhan Council and we will start in January 1st to offer the same scholarship we offer in Karachi. We will be offering same scholarship to the Punjab region now, starting January 1st. That is done deal already. So, inshallah. I would like to add one thing with your permission. Uh, that these meetings were also attended by National Secretary of Pakistan and he was very impressed by one of our projects which was started this year. We had brainstormed about you know starting a volunteer program in which we had said that students who volunteer for 50 hours will be given scholarship and and the way they volunteer is that they do whatever we need them to do there as well as we have children who are not at merit because of whatever schools they are going in in community so they are weak in english or maths or sciences so our older kids can teach them give them tuition as volunteers and then they get the hours and our children can go to, you know, meet the criteria of third foreign school and go to Akhan school. So when we were mentioning these things in the meeting, uh, the national secretary shared something with us, which was very fascinating, that Hazri Mang was in Diamond Jubilee was informed about the TKN Nazarana, which is huge amount remaining from Golden Jubilee. And Jamaat has also given this time, but not as much as they had given in Golden Jubilee because it's not being utilized. So Jamaat is kind of like, if it's not being used, then why do we, you know, um, even give TKN? So the motivation had gone down and they did not know how to help use that TKN hours because it involved going to another country and, you know, building bridges, cost and so much of administration that it was not being utilized. Hundreds and thousands and I don't know how many hours millions are there. Hours. Millions of hours are remaining to be used by, you know, um, uh, for TKN offered by Jama. So when they heard this about this uh, uh, our voluntary program, he shared that when this was reported to Hazri Mam, Hazri Mam said, let the TKN be used on one-to-one -one basis locally. One-to-one -one basis locally. And they said that we've had this instructions from Imam, but we did not know how to implement that. We had no idea. But listening to you, you have given us wisdom a strategy how to implement. So this was very exciting for us that we being very, very small, literally it's a tiny dot in front of AKS, you know, we are just a dot. But the way we've been working with, with mercy of Mola, guidance of Mola, it was so, uh, you know, well received by the, you know, all these leaders and they thanked us saying that now we know how to use our TKN hours. So it was amazing. And uh, so now you will hear more and more that we have to use our TKN here only on one to one basis whoever you know we need it so today actually we are what we are doing is tkn believe it or not right it's giving time to each other you know locally so that was very impressive right. so he quoted molapa on two places one molapa say use the tkn quotation one on one and then molapa gave some more instruction and then he quoted again molapa use this hour locally where you live and it was in quotation that those were the words Malafa used. So all those millions of hours that we have pledged, even though we have received the blessing, but we still like to do something, you know? So we can tell our children and grandchildren that in Golden Jubilee of Malafa, you know, this program came out and we were part of it. So since everybody cannot go overseas, like she said, this will be a way, an opportunity for the entire Jamaat doesn't matter what level. You know, somebody like me who's not a doctor, who's nobody, can still serve some, somebody in Jamaat. You know, I can help somebody in Jamaat. So everybody will have a chance to serve in Jamaat now. So this was a great. And the other funniest part, I would say, so meeting was supposed to, they had given us 30 minutes. And out of the 30 minutes, we had 20 minutes to, to do our presentation. And 10 minutes was supposed to question answer. We started right after Jamatana and we didn't finish until one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right? And then they say, okay, we will have to uh, get approval from National. Barkat Bhai was also there. We actually, all entire team was there. Uh, but 7.30 in the morning, after we came back uh, from Jamatana, we received an email from the regional president, 7.30 in the morning. Remember, we were there until one o'clock. 
that has been approved. He has also already talked, uh, spoke to president of the national, and they said we can go ahead with this program. That's how quick it happened, which is unheard of it. Normally, there's a lot of red tape, a lot of you know things, but shukran uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, the uh, national and the local president, they were convinced, and the secretary of the national was more convinced than both of them together. So they must have had a communication middle of the night after we left. And uh, they were able to give us a, uh, approval letter 7.30 in the morning, next morning. <clears throat> if anybody has any question regarding this, uh, we can talk about it for a few minutes. Otherwise, we will go into our uh, general session. Any question? We good? Do you want guys wanted to add anything? Do you want to have any questions, or should we just move forward from where we left it last time? I'm reading the farmans. Good. Uh, so really old farmans. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you want to share something yeah. from there? Okay. <laughs> So we go on Jamaat Khana Shanasi. Right. So three weeks ago, we started to talk about Jamaat Khana Shanasi. And the reason that we moved from Ilm Shanasi, the importance of, of the Ilm in our tariqah, into Jamaat Khana Shanasi. What is Jamaat Khana Shanasi? Recognizing our tariqah. Recognizing the place which we call Jamaat Khana. And we had talked about few of the things already and the importance of the place, the Jamatana itself. I don't remember, did we talk about the Jamatana compared to Masjid and Jamatana compared to Khana Kaaba? No. We have not. Okay. So there are many, many different kinds of Jamatanas. Many, many different kinds of Jamatanas. One, we can call it international Jamatana or a central Jamatana, which entire Ummah can look up to and can go to. And we call that Khana Kaaba. What is the historical background of Khana Kaaba? Does anyone know that Khana Kaaba originally was built by Adam himself? Anyone? No one. Okay. Abraham was good. It's more than that. So originally, when Adam was sent down from the heavens, he missed their home so much, he asked Allah, can I build a symbolic home where I was? Can I do that? And Allah says, just build a home exactly underneath their other home. It's called Betul Mamur. Betul Mamur, meaning home which is lived in, occupied home. Amazing part is that we think the Khana Kaaba is a place, no one lives there. But when Adam asked Allah about it, he said, build this home exactly under Betul Mamur, occupied home. The tawil of that is that we, within human, we also have few jamatanas within us. And the home of Allah, the Betul Mamur, within the human body is in our forehead. At the intellectual level, which is occupied, meaning there is a living soul, living nur within the human. We may not realize it, but it's always there. And that is a soul which was breathed into Adam and through him we have it today. So he said, build that home right underneath that in your heart. Build a home of Allah in your heart, right under your intellect. The place of heart is the place of soul. And then we have a physical Jamatana. That's the third one. So at the intellectual level, at the level of the soul, which is our heart, 
So he was given the instruction to build a home under your forehead or under your intellect, Jamathana, and then within your soul, in your heart. So he was exactly us ghar ke niche jo asman mein tha. And we all know the asman or the heaven that we look at today is not the way we think the asman is. If you keep going up and up, there is no end. So how would we even think that there is a home in, in the heavens or in the sky? And where and how? Because all this requires interpretation. It requires understanding. And since Adam understood what Allah was telling him, so he, first of all, he built a home within himself in his personal world. And then he also built a home for the others in a physical sense. So that could be, could be a symbol for them. What was the symbol for them? That there is a home, just like Hana Kaaba, in the heavens, which is occupied, which is uh, lived in by all the Ambiyas, the Prophets, and all yas, the friends of Allah. And th there, that is a place where living, people are living, not the dead people. And we will explain what does it mean, not the dead people. We thought we have to die to get to the heaven. Right? But I'm saying, that is a heaven, that is the place where people are living. Okay? So he built that Kanakaba, the very first one. Maybe it was just a wall. Maybe it was just a small place. But when the storm, the flood of the Noah came, the Kanakaba was destroyed. The physical Kanakaba. And when Ibrahim came, he had the wish that I will rebuild the Khana Kaaba, which was built by Adam himself. So he asked Allah again, guide me. I don't know where the Khana Kaaba was on the earth. And Allah said, what? Build exactly underneath the Khana, uh, house of the Lord, Bethul Mamur, which is in the heavens. Same guidance. And he said, but I don't know where Bethel Mamur is. So how do I build? And Allah sent in, in the stories, okay? Not in Tawil. So make sure we understand the examples compared to its actual meaning. In the example, Allah sent a rock. Or wo rock jo hai udra ke gira. And that's where he built the Khanai. That is the physical uh, example. So he built the Kaaba. Now the instruction after that is the one we should be looking at. Then Allah says, call on the people. Call on the people. Invite them to come to the Kaaba and pray where you stand, not where Kana Kaaba stands. I'm going to repeat this. This is very important to understand Jamathana. Allah says, call upon people to come and pray where you stand. And you get tumare yakin par, tumare belief par, tumare tara, tumare piche, tumare saat. Unko kao ke pray kare. Meaning, Allah was giving him the order to tell people to follow him. The way he followed Allah. Halakhi kya wana chahiye tha? Ki jaan par khana kaaba hai, maa bacha ke pray karo. Aisa nahi bula laga. This requires a eye into the Quran. How do we read Quran? Because if you don't read the Quran the way we should be reading Quran, 
then we may think of something and there would be our ill concept, our ill way of understanding Quran. And I think this Furman, where Sudha Muhammad Shah, may our soul be sacrificed to the Imam, says that if you, and the word is if you learn the Quran, learn from those smileys who knows Quran. And because they do not have the guidance of Imam, they may have a different interpretation which will affect our concept, our way of thinking. Because we follow Imam and his Farman, then we must follow anything and everything he guides us to including the Gnan, the Farman, the Quran, and the books, the way he wants us to guide. That's how we will follow, not the way we want to follow. Because in our bayat, we have said, we will follow your Farman, and we will do exactly the way you will guide us. I'm not saying we're not going to use our intellect, but we're going to use our intellect within his Farman. Within his Farman. Where he Farman not be able to use intellect ko use nahi Not in, when it comes to religion matter. If we can do anything in the world, if we can take the Farman of the Imam and understand, I think it will benefit us much, much more. Especially look at all the Farman on education. Where are we as a Jamaat today? Compared to just 25 years ago. I remember the first time when Mullah came, 1983 in America. How long was that? 35 years ago? 33 years ago? 38 years ago? I mean, most of the Jamaat was labor. Most Jamaat worked in the restaurants, in, in the convenience stores, in gas stations, in factories. And look at where the Jamaat is today. Look at how educated. How many doctors do we have? How many nurses do we have? How many engineers and high level IT people do we have in Jamaat today? Where are we in, as a Jamaat today? Compared to just a few years back when we came to America. Come back to the uh, Khana Kaaba. <coughs> so <coughs> the current Khana Kaaba was built by Ibrahim and his son Ismail. Do we know what was the position of Ibrahim in our Tariqa, non-Islam? Do we know that? Does anyone? Anyone in the back? What is the position of Ibrahim in our tariqa? Zara? Nevin? Nothing. Huh? He was nothing and? In our tariqa? Imam. Imam. First Thank imam. you. Are we surprised that Ibrahim was our Imam? It says in Quran. In Quran it is mentioned for Ibrahim. That after he was already prophet, and she used the word natik, and we will explain what is the difference between prophet and natik. But he is mentioned after he was prophet that I make you imam of the people. And the word, there are 12 references of imam in Quran. 12. One of those references is for Ibrahim. Ibrahim was the first. Prophet was mentioned as Imam in the Quran. And if you look at Mulapa and follow his guidance closely, Mulapa had talked about Ibrahim. Then not only Mulapa is Ali Muhammad and Allah the Ali, he's from the Ali Ibrahim and Ali Imran and Ali Muhammad and Ali Ali. And recently in our nikah, in our nikah ceremony, Molapa changed one word, a name, from Saira to Hajra. In our old nikah, up until Diamond Jubilee, it would read like 
Yusuf and Zuleika, like Ibrahim and Sarah. Malapa changed it. He said, no. Hajra was my daddy. Hajra was my daddy, not Sarah. Sarah was the mother of Isaac, and Hajra was the mother of Ismail. And through Ismail, the progeny of the Imam continues today. So he rectified that after 4,000 years. Remember 4,000 years of history making. That's a long time. But he rectified that and he made the changes in the Quran. By saying Hajra was my daddy, he gave the credit to where it was belonged. If anybody who is interested in this history, she can help you find all that history. How Hajra was the mother of our Imams and why her name was not mentioned earlier. And there's a big historical uh, stories that you can read and understand. On, on your side, extracurriculum courses, you can do that. And then if you have a question, please do come and we can answer that. Acha. So, second Kana Kaaba was built. Now, it was not possible for all Muslims to go to Kana Kaaba. So Muhammad had put conditions that you must be this much well off before the Hajj is for us. Okay? And those conditions were put on. But what do people do to follow Allah's Farman of praying where Ibrahim stood? How do they follow their Farman? Let's say a poor person like me Never have enough money to go to Khan Kaaba. So meaning this Farman is not for me anymore? That would be so unfair of Allah and Ibrahim and Muhammad. I would be blaming everybody and anybody. No, Allah is not unfair, not unjust. So what did he do? With the Farman of the Natikin and the Prophets and the Imam, he built Masjid at that time. So we're gonna we are starting in the back. He started to build masjid where people can go as the house of Allah. Remember, masjid again is a just a symbol. Going to masjid is not a going to a physical place. You're supposed to be seeking the living home of Allah, which is Baitul Mamur. So you're supposed to have a two Allah's home. You have one already built and you should build one. Right? That was the symbol. Unfortunately, when people left the knowledge, when people left the guidance of the prophets and the imam, they got stuck with the physical places. Their reach was just a physical place. That's it. They will look at the physical place and that will be the end of the journey. When in actual talimat, the talim was to build a home of Allah within your heart, within your own personal world. So you may have that living home of Allah within you always. That was the guidance. And that is the place where Ibrahim, all of our prophet, and Imam stands. Where do I get that from? Mullah says himself in Suzama Mashad Jama. I cannot be anywhere. You cannot encompass me anywhere. But you can encompass me within your heart. So Imam is it within your heart. That is the living place of Allah now. Because the Imam is the living noon of Allah on this earth and Imam is the living soul within our heart. And that is the living Jamatana within our heart. So now what do we do with this Jamatana? We have a physical Jamatana. We have a living Jamatana within us. So look how Imam makes it so easier for us to follow both. What does he say? 
if you cannot come to Jamatana. You should come to Jamatana, but if you cannot, what are you supposed to do? Call on Allah, call on Muhammad, call on any name of Imam. And any second, any five seconds you have available, during the day or night, call on him. Can you go to Jamatana every five seconds or every day? No. So what do you do? You go to this Jamatana. You go to this Jamatana where your living Imam is living within you. And you call on him. You remember him. Take the word remember only. Why remember? You must have forgotten something. So you're trying to remember it. What have you forgotten? That you have a living soul within you. That's what you have forgotten. So he's reminding us. He's asking us to remember him within yourself where you have forgotten. And by remembering him, you are keeping this home a living home of Allah. A living. Can this Jamatana be, become a living home of Allah? That's a question we should ask. So I would strongly recommend two of the lectures. One is form belief. She can help you find that. Form belief. And second is, is there anything more than rites and rituals in our tariqah? If you listen to those two lectures, it will explain all of this, what we are talking about today. So let's come to Jamatana. How did Jamatana become Jamatana? And why do we need a Jamatana, a physical place? When our tariqah is Bhatini tariqah. Agar Bhatini tariqah hai, why are we following something physical? Right? That's the question. And this question is in minds of our youngster more and more every day now. Because our life is on three levels. And first is physical. First is physical. You are born by physical parents. You have a physical body. You live in a physical world. You learn and do a lot of things which is physical. Meaning, physical life and physical jamasana is the door. Just an example to get to his original, which is the second level, the soul. To our surprise, soul is also a physical on one level. And soul is also an example on one level. What is the meaning behind that? That you, from the soul, use the door to get to your intellect. Simple question to keep in your mind. A powerful statement, if you think of it. Someone asks you, how are you alive? You will quickly answer, because I have a soul. If someone asks you, how is your soul alive? How would you answer that? Soul of our soul is our intellect. Do you hear that? Soul of our soul is our intellect. If we did not have an intellect, and just the soul in our body, what would people call us? Say it loudly. Even though you're living, you're not really living. Is that people go in a coma, right? Are they living? What happens to people in coma? You are a doctor. They still have a soul. How come they are not able to move? I thought soul was moving our body. What we don't see. That's why the soul, even that is kind of physical. Soul of our soul is our intellect. When the intellect is shut down, when our brain is sh shut down, our soul is not able to act or react. And because our soul is not acting or reacting, our body cannot act or react. Because the signal is cut off. Think of that. 
our soul is living due to our intellect. To put it in religious terms, put it in religious terms. Without the Imam, which is our akhlaqul, universal intellect, our brain. Without him, our soul will not be able to act. And when our soul doesn't act, our physical life will go to when. That's it. Puri zindagi karab. Because our soul, soul, which is Imam, and we are not listening. We have disconnected. We are living, but we are living in a coma. Do we see how important the guidance, the nur of Imam is for us? Because without the nur, our soul cannot live. Because our soul is soul hai, wo nur e Imam hai actually. Ye hai amara tarika. This is our religion. The core of our religion. Can nothing moves. Physically, it may look like we are moving, we are living. But because our soul is dead, due to not have the nur of Imam, it just looks like we are living, just like the person in a coma. Nobody can say he's dead. But is he really living? No. Let's come back to Jamatan again. At time of Musa and Harun, again I'm going to ask the same question. Do we know what was the position of Harun in our Tariqa? Anyone? Huh? G. What is the Hadith? The Ali is to me as Harun was to Musa. If Ali was the Imam after the Muhammad, now what was Harun? After Musa. These are the questions I need you guys to remember and write it down somewhere. Don't let me slide. Challenge. Challenge. Prove it to us that Harun was the Imam. Prove it to us that Ibrahim was the Imam. Or prove it to us there was the Imam before Mulali. Simple. Write down this question. Don't let me slide. Okay? Because we want you to have a brain, an intellect that works really hard and open up. Let's not just confine ourselves into the limited knowledge that we have today. It would be so much wider and, and brighter if you have this much knowledge or this much knowledge. So we can see things that we were not able to see before. <coughs> huh? Okay. So, Allah has given the instruction to Musa and Ibrahim to take some of the homes of the Mu'mineen and turn them into Qibla, Khan Aqaba. That's what Khan Aqaba only supposed to be one. But in the Quran it says, take some of the homes of the Mu'mineen and turn them into Qibla. Make them Qibla. Now you call Sagar and then it says underneath ki ye wo ghar hoge jahan par khuda ka naam liya jata hoga this will be the home where people will remember allah aaye noor ke andar aa jaye wahan par bhi same cheez aapko milengi ki ye wo jagah hai jahan par khuda ka naam liya jata hai theek hai this was the first instruction that we have seen in quran where Allah is directly giving order to a prophet and a imam to build some individual homes as a Qibla, as a Jamasana. Hum naam par a jate, ek second ke liye, because we may be confused between the name Khanai Kaaba, between the name Masjid, between the name Jamasana. Khanai Kaaba, a center home, simple. A central home. Very simple. Iske barak masjid, a place where someone can 
गो एंड पोस्ट्रे सजदा करने की जगह मस्जिद जमात का ना अ प्लेस वेयर जमात कैन गो इन द नेम जमात का नाम समटाइम आवर यंगस्टर एस्क हाउ कम वी डोंट लेट आवर फ्रेंड्स कम्स टू जमात का वेन वी कैन गो टू देर चर्च वी कैन गो टू देर मस्जिद बट वी डोंट लेट देम कम टू जमात का वेन दे कम टू मी आई नो मे से हु टोल्ड यू दे कैन नॉट कम टू जमात का यू बी सेंग वॉट दे कैन ऑल कम टू जमात का Of course, all of your friends can come to Jamaatana, but they have to come what? They have to become Jamaat first. How do you become Jamaat? You have to do a bayat on the hand of Imam. If you are in the bayat of the Imam, you are Jamaat. Now your Jamaatana is for you. If you have not done the bayat, then this Jamaatana is not for you. So can they come to Jamaatana? Yes, they can come to Jamaatana. But they have to follow what is required for them to come jamaat. Once they are jamaat, they can come to jamaat. Huh? So sometimes we put that in a negative, right? No, 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 no. They cannot come to jamaat. Huh? I don't think that's the right way of answering our children today. Because they will say, "Well, they let us come to their masjid, then we will be lost if we will not be able to answer." Answer logically, because Jamaatana is for the Jamaat, and Jamaat is the one who has done the bayat at the hand of the Imam. If if they are willing to do that, of course they can come to Jamaat. It's very simple. ठीक है? So is the name. जब मस्जिद बनने लगी, we are talking about after Prophet Muhammad. वापस एक और आयत. ये सारे रेफरेंसेस प्लीज डू एस सो शी कैन प्रोवाइड ऑल द रेफरेंसेस तो दो किस्म की मस्जिदें बनने लगी एंड दिस मे आल्सो बी सरप्राइज टू यू ऑल द मस्जिद वी सी अराउंड द वर्ल्ड आर दे ऑल लीगल या हमारे लगे में जायज हलाल है ये सारी मस्जिद है आप बोलेंगे हाँ मस्जिद है तो जायज ही होगी हलाल ही होगी नार इन दाइज ऑफ अल्लाह Not in the eyes of Allah. Allah said there are two kind of masjids. Na masjid hi hai. Two kind of masjid. Ek jo taqwa ke base pe rakhi gayi hai. On the basis of the purity. And it says, "Aap sirf uske andar khade rehna jo masjid taqwa ke base pe khadi ki gayi hai. Only go to, only stand in the masjid." Which were built on the basis of the purity. Do not go to, do not stand in the masjid which was built for zarar. Zarar ka matlab hota hai hit karna, harb lagana, torna, kharabi felana, do something bad. And Allah says in Quran, I'm not saying that. There are people who build masjid so they may put division within the Islam. किसने मस्जिद बनाते हैं? इस्लाम के अंदर division करने के लिए. इसके लिए जो word use हुआ कि ज़रार लगाना, और लगाना, तोड़ देना. इस्लाम को तोड़ने के लिए मस्जिद बनाई गई. उसमें तुम नहीं जाना और नहीं खड़े रहना. How do we know masjid is masjid is ज़रार? And which masjid is masjid is taqwa? How do we know that? Simple. जो prophet के फरमान से, जो imam के फरमान से masjid नहीं बनी है. In our case, जमात से नहीं बना है, उसके अंदर पाव नहीं रखना. दुनिया के अंदर कुछ masjid हैं, आज भी build होती है. और कुछ मस्जिदें इमाम के फरमान के मुताबिक बिल्ड होती है मस्जिदें भी ना रहूंगी जमा था ना मस्जिद भी फॉर एग्जांपल कराची के अंदर जो रहे हैं बोल्टन मार्केट पर ये एक मस्जिद है जामा मस्जिद डिड यू नो सुल्तान मोहम्मद शाह गे फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द फंडिंग टू अदर मस्जिद यस दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट मस्जिद बिल्ड आफ्टर नाइनटीन एंड सुल्तान मोहम्मद शाह गे फिफ्टी ऑफ द फंडिंग Or their masjid, out of his pocket. 
right? So, again, come to Jamathana. A Jamathana cannot be built without Imam's permission on three levels. Amazing. It requires three Furman to open one Jamathana. Pela Furman, Kaha Jamathana Banana. First Furman, yes, we need to build a Jamathana. Second Furman, Ke Jaga Milke Ye, start the construction of the Jamathana. Without the Furman, they cannot start the construction. Aapko pata hai ki abhi jo yusra mein jaga ban rahi hai, the land has been, been bought like, I don't know, couple of decades ago. It's just sitting there. Lekin, until the second Furman comes, they cannot start the construction. Even after the Jamathana is built and ready to go, some Jamathana takes a day, a week, a month, even six months that I know of in my lifetime that I've seen takes this long before we get the third Furman. Jab tak wo Furman nahi aata hai ki aap Jamathana mein ab bed kar dua padhe. This is the Jamathana where you should go to pray. Until their Furman, it's still not a Jamathana. You see that? Hamar har cheez ka agas imam ke Furman se hota hai. Chahe wo hamar is thought process ho ke Jamathana banana hai. Chahe hamar action ho ke Jamathana banana hai. Chahe hamar Jamathana jana ho wa dua padna ho. Cannot start without the Farman of the Imam. So I think I'm going to stop here. Yeah, let me give references. You're going to give some references? Yeah. Those of you who would like to go back and read, so you can note down these references. The first <coughs> term he mentioned was Baitul Mamur, the occupied house. The reference for that is 52 by 4. Baitul Mamur, 52 by 4. Then he talked about... Um, the prophet Musa and Harun to build houses and their reference that reference is 10 by 87 and if you want to look at Suleiman like all the prophets have built this actually so his reference is 34 by 13 <clears throat> and then he also mentioned a house where prayers are being offered morning and evening that reference is actually 24 by 36 24 by 36 then we talked about masjid e zarrar the reference for that is 9 by 107 9 by 107 english let's look at the word where i think the easiest understanding is that mm -hmm. fitna you know? partition. partition. Yeah. If you look at the word, if you can, one of you yeah. can look at the words for me. Nine by one o seven. <clears throat> and then the next next type of masjid is which is built on purity. It's called masjid e muttaqin. The masjid which is built on taqwa. That reference is nine by one o eight. We also talked about the place where Ibrahim was told to build a mosque, Qibla. That reference is 2 by 125. Interestingly, he also talked about physical and spiritual. And then there's a beautiful reference in Quran actually, which talks about physical religion and spiritual religion. In that context, the verse, the reference is 9 by 18. And I see a lot of youngsters today, if you want to read another reference. Uh, about importance of intellect. Okay. That reference is 21 by 31. 21 by 31 and 12 by 105. I loved it, you know, when we understand it is our intellect which, which makes our soul move. And it is our soul which makes our body moves. 
If we understand that, then we understand that the physical is a door to bathin, that the soul is a door to our intellect, you know. Then we become totally living. And living, you know, uh, being alive, we, we say it in dua three times a day. In every giyaz ari tasbi, hayyana rabbuna bis salam. So that's the reference of al-hayy, which is 2 by 255. Chapter 2, verse 255. Here you may want to give them a Surah Furqan 2558 that it is it was told that only believe in living. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. La Yamud Ka Joy. La Yamud. Yeah. So you explained it. So the uh, reference is 25 by 58. There's one more. Uh, 3 by 1, 12, 111. They're so doing that references. You call it a side reference. Yeah. 20 by 111. The reference for al -Hai, because we gave it also, 20 by 111. So if you review these references and if you are not able to understand the concepts we talked about, do bring it here. We can discuss it here in detail. So we really understand and grasp the concept, right? We should have some of the questions. 